Hi everybody, I'm Allison, Allison Kent Home Kitchen, the go-to place for home kitchen things. Uh, we're talking today with Jonathan Kinney, who is from my most attended, uh, there he is, my most attended cooking school, which is Northwest Culinary. Jonathan, hi Nicole. Are you there, Jonathan? There you are. Hi. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> I was sitting here for the last couple of minutes going, when's the time going to change? When's the time going to change? <laughs> <laughs> and then you sit there and then the buttons start not working. And <laughs> exactly. I was refreshing. It's like, oh. <laughs> I've learned to have my phone charged and to have the ringer off. Like you start learning all these tricks, but you learn them mostly the hard way, which is unfortunate. <laughs> well, and we put little posters around the kitchen, making sure that nobody's coming in. And yeah. Yep. Yes, because you're actually in the in the culinary school today, which is right. I am. Which way? I that am. way. That way. Um, that, that that way. That way. That way. <laughs> which is right that way. And class is in session. You guys are. There back is to our pro class. Yeah. Full time programming. You're back to full time kind of programs after all the COVID stuff. Yeah, we luckily we only missed uh, last summer, uh, spring summer. So that was that was good, and we've been running at half capacity ever since. So. It's, you know, it's been a challenge, but you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we're able to do that at least. That's good. I came in, I think during COVID, I came in for the sourdough class. You did. Which I'm sure was popular during COVID. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were the last non-professional class that we had, I think before COVID hit, because I think we closed down the week after or the, or two weeks after your class. So, yeah. There we go, was, lucky me. Lucky and I, had you. Been, I had actually been making sourdough for a couple of years, but I just find like once in a while it's handy to come in and just see in person and be able to ask those in person questions. And I know there's a lot of online cooking stuff going on these days, but it's yeah. just really hard to replace that kind of like in the moment and all the extra notes and all the extra information you get when you're there in person. So, well, it's, it's interesting you should say that about the online because that's kind of what we, during COVID, that's what we kind of focused on is how could we try to give that kind of experience to somebody if they're not in Vancouver? And that's, you know, that's something that's, that's been really big for us. But, and it's exactly what you've been saying is that, oh, how do you, how do you give them that sort of personal touch? Luckily, we've been doing this for a while, so hopefully we can answer some of the questions for them well, before they know, before they even know them. <laughs> before they know them. Well, yeah. the school has a few kind of pretty smart cookies there. Why don't you give us like a brief, a brief history of Northwest? Sure. So Northwest, uh, we started teaching in 2004. There were two uh, instructors who taught at De Bruyne, which people may know, but De Bruyne became the Art Institute, which became LaSalle College. I went to De Bruyne. But, did you? Yeah. Sure. So you did some evening courses at De Bruyne or did you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just the yeah. ones, yeah. So uh, when AI took over De Bruyne, um, both the instructors, Tony and Christoph, they, they left, they moved on. And Tony was driving down Main Street in Vancouver and he saw this storefront and he fell in love right then and there. And within four months, they were running their first class. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, he, he became best friends with the city planning department. Um, so, yeah, and, and we've been running pro classes and non-professional classes uh, ever since. Uh, we, so we we're, we're literally have taught thousands of students uh, out of this location, and uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. I, I have came here as a student, actually. I changed careers. I came here as a student in 2008, uh, worked in the industry for a while, and, and always came back and, and helped uh, Tony with the evening classes, and then had a chance to come back full time in 2014, and haven't haven't left. So, yeah. <laughs> and they just never got rid of you. You're they still just. There. I, I, I always joke that there's a hammock for me in the <laughs> in the storage room because I just you know I never left. Well, you were there the very first class I took, which was back then. And I like your term for the non-pros. Uh, I think you call them enthusiasts. Which enthusiasts, I really like. yeah. They're not. Some people say the amateurs or like the home yeah. cooks or whatever, no. but. I think last time I was talking to you, so the first course I took was the, you used to have an eight week, one one night a week for eight week yeah. kind of program. Yeah. 
which was called the basics. I think you still yes. have the basics. It's just like we've, we've changed the formatting a little bit, but yeah, we, we still have the basics. It's, it's our core. It's our foundation course. We call it. So, yeah. Well, I was really attracted to, um, and I've taken quite a few classes all over the world. And yeah. I really like how you guys weren't so much about recipes. You were very much about technique yeah. and learning skills and learning Absolutely. how to cook and, the notes I took, I think you've probably seen me take notes in yes. class. <laughs> I think we actually took pictures of your notes. <laughs> <laughs> like obsessive, like every single thing yeah. one of the chefs says, it's in my notes because there's just yeah. so much information and there's so much that is behind the recipe. So you're given a Absolutely. piece of paper with the recipe and maybe one or two notes, but you're, yeah. the information that you chefs have in, in your brains and that you yeah. pass on to everybody is just immense. And so I, I still yeah. have every single note I took. <laughs> it's all, I upload it all to my Google Drive and I have this. Oh, Google really? Oh, okay. good. Full of, well, because then I can access it while I'm out grocery shopping. There you go. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's a good idea. One of the things that we've done, and actually to take it one step further than what you were saying, we try to not even use the word recipe at all when like we're it. in. So we talk about things like practice or technique or you know whatever it happens to be, um, because I think what happens with recipes is that people become very pigeonholed, and yeah. it's it's this this is the only way that I can make it, and I can't think of anything else. Whereas if we teach you how to make a soup, we're literally teaching you a technique that you could make five hundred soups. Because the recipe it, it, kind yeah. of takes away the creativity of it. And exactly. You don't know what's sitting in somebody's fridge that they could have added to that dish. And, you know, then it also goes to reducing waste and yeah. doing all this other stuff. So I exactly. like, I really appreciated learning the creativity of the cooking. And like you said, once you are armed with some techniques, yeah, you're good to go. Maybe, I, maybe that's why I don't bake. I don't like, like a lot of, well, yeah. A lot well, of and that's, yeah. <laughs> but even then, you know, even then, I think using the term, you know, methodology or whatever, I think it's still there's just this thing, even in pastry, where if you said recipe, people just feel very uh, constrained. And it's and so we, we, you know, we do whatever we can to break molds. Um, no pun intended. I refer um, but to yeah. like ratio sometimes. So like even exactly. a sauce will start with a ratio. Yep. But in that ratio of like uh, fat to some kind of flour to, substance yeah. in your roux, it could be anything. And sugar, you could yeah. Really yeah. Go nuts with it. So I like, I know that there Absolutely. are some ratios that you need to pay attention yeah. to, or the Absolutely. science and the chemistry of cooking isn't yeah. going to quite fly. But well, and that's, yeah. And science is, you just said science, science is super important. Uh, and it is. It's like if you're going to, it's the reason why you need to make a roux and you can't just throw your flour into your soup or your, or your stuff yeah. or, or your stew or whatever. So, you know, there is some core science that you always need to do, but it's, you know, the recipe is not it. It's the science. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I like it. I dropped in, I think shortly after that, my cousin was taking one of your big time programs and I, I uh, yeah. got to drop in for a couple of weeks, which was like my <laughs> happy place. <laughs> and once again, I'm back at the front of the class and all these people are yeah. looking at me going, who is this person? <laughs> she just showed up. I don't know. <laughs> she just showed up. And she's like sitting in the front. Nobody else is sitting at the front. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. I want to see. <laughs> I was like, I don't That's... care. I'm sitting at the front. Exactly. But exactly. it was, um, I really learned a lot during that one. And I, and I would like to come and take more of that one. I'll sub in for somebody else's weeks one day. But um, yep. I really enjoyed learning kind of more the sustainability of cooking and the head to toe. And, and you said you guys have taken it even further, which I'm sure you'll tell us about. Um, yeah. But just the, the fact that we would take um, a protein, an animal, and we yep. would use learn how to use every single like literally head to tail of every single bit of that animal. And I, I love that it's super sustainable and a good yeah. practice to learn, especially in the kitchen. Well, and, and we even take, you know, when you're doing uh, a salmon, we, we've, we've got this diagram that we've drawn that we're going to be, we, we're actually be putting out, a, talk a little bit about it later. We're going to be doing a, a textbook. Uh, but we have this drawing where we literally break down a salmon with different dishes coming off the different pieces of the salmon. And you know we can, and you could do everything. And you you mentioned things that we're doing. We actually have a sort of a recycling reclamation project where we dehydrate things that would normally go in compost, 
and make powders out of it that we can use to flavor dishes m moving on. So we do, you know, we do that with salmon skin and, and all different kinds of things that, that will continue to use as much of a product as possible because, you know, in a lot of ways it's, it's financially, it makes sense, but also you're honoring the animal as well. So. Well, now my head is abuzz with like dehydrated salmon skin salt, salmon yes. skin salt or something, which exactly. is amazing sprinkled on a yep. fish soup Absolutely. or something like that. Yeah. And, it, and it looks beautiful as well because you could put it on a nice creamy chowder and it has that, you know, the, the, the bit of a, you know, that silvery gray. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of that yeah. iridescence in it. Oh, exactly. I like it. Well, even when I... Um, when I do a big cook at home and sometimes I'm cooking for many, many people. So if I know I'm going to go through a lot of food, not now, obviously, but pre COVID, yeah. um, I will actually plan to be making my stock next and to be making this and that and yeah. the other. And I will have like my, my next recipes or like you said, the extra recipes that are coming yeah. off the other pieces of the food. I will be prepared for all that because I'll just buy two extra carrots or I'll buy like, you yeah. know, whatever. Well, we always we always love to tell people, you know, just keep a bag in your freezer that's got all your extra carrot ends or celery ends or onion ends that you can always use to make a stock sometime in the future. I do that a lot with my uh, seafood shells. Yeah. So we'll go yeah. through our raw oyster fits and I just have tons of bags of oyster shells and then the clam shells and the yeah. crab shells, everything. And then by the end of summer, by like, mid-September, I am making the best seafood stock you've ever had. Absolutely. Same I thing with chicken bones. Oh, did you? Yep. Oh. Except I bought it during COVID. It took like six months to get here. Oh, no. Because <laughs> it's you and everybody else, right? It's so full. I couldn't fit anything more in my freezer. And I have three freezers, and I just couldn't fit anything more in it. And I'm like, I've got to start canning this stuff. It, I can't sustain this. <laughs> oh, man. So it's six months. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. We've been really fortunate with the stuff that we've had to buy for the school that we haven't had too long a wait, but I, I can only imagine the, the, you know, the uptick in, in people buying, even, even just simple things like Instapots. I'm quite sure that it was taken forever for people to get them. Uh, everybody's home. They're spending all this time in their kitchen. And as you know, my day job is still in architecture. I'm focusing on yeah. kitchen design now. And the shortages in appliances and cabinetry and everything else is just incredible. Mm -hmm. But people are cooking more and more professionally at home. And I think we talked one of the last programs I was in um, that there's a good chunk of the people in your full time professional program that are yeah. just there to cook at home. They're yeah. not yeah, going to work in true. a restaurant. They're not going to work anywhere else. They want to be able to cook professional meals yeah. at home. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in, I'm just trying to think in this class. So in this culinary class, we have 16 students. I would say at least three of them are people who want to make great food at home and at some point may do something, but they may not. Um, you know, we have one person who's actually running his business while he's in culinary school. <laughs> his clients don't know. So he hasn't slept in like months then. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. So... But, you know, I think that for, for a lot of people, um, they want to push themselves. And this is almost like people that are training for a marathon or something like that. Uh, you know, this is beyond what they would do with a non-professional enthusiast course. They want to push themselves for 15 weeks hardcore. And, you know, I, I, I get it. I totally get it. I would love to do it one day. You know that I'm waiting for my kids to like grow up and leave the <laughs> nest and <laughs> that I can come and cook. And I was right there with my little, those little uh, cooking Crocs. What are those really yeah. ugly shoes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had it all there. <laughs> You're like, oh, this person's so keen. <laughs> but cooking okay. classes is, and, and I think you guys did, or maybe you still do have a lot of, um, one evening courses or mostly just longer ones? We're, we're mostly doing, so the way we've broken down our basics class now is we do two Thursdays and two all day Saturdays. So they're, they're a lot more condensed, but we, we, you know, we found that people uh, are learning a lot more because the intensity, it's almost like a, it, it's like we always think of them like immersion language immersion programs, right? So 
And we found that we wanted to offer more of those rather than doing the one-off courses. Because the one-off courses, it's a lot of prep. And then people, at the end of it, they're, 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 you're just getting them revved up and then they don't know what to do. Yeah. So It's, it's yeah, hard so. to learn a lot of value in just one evening. Yeah. And the one evening people are probably more prone to just want a recipe as well, which is what. Yeah. And there are, there are programs uh, in the city that are really good at, you know, the one evening stuff. And, you know, in, in reality, we can't compete with, yeah. you know, the, because a lot of it is a dog and pony show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, no, be, yeah. The only but, one-off ones I think I do now are usually when I'm traveling. And yes. even then it's really hard to find one that is actually an intelligent class. Like I don't want it dumbed down for the tourists. I actually want to take like a authentic Spanish class while I'm in yes. Spain. I want to learn your techniques. I want to learn your spices, your flavors, whatever. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to do as you travel, but it is really hard to find intelligently yeah. taught classes that do that. Well, and, and it makes sense because most of the people that are taking it are not looking for that level of intensity or they don't think that they are. Uh, and, you know, we have, a, we have a friend who does, she's taking classes in Sicily and she's, she's gone through the gamut of, of the classes that they have and she's found a few that are really intense. Most of them aren't. Yeah. Well, you guys have done a good job of bringing some of that into your programs though, because mm -hmm. when I was doing, when I was subbing in for those couple of weeks, um, there was a whole class just on Colombian food taught by Chef Warren. Chef Warren. I should remember that's my <laughs> husband's name. Um, because his wife is Colombian, was that? Yes. So yeah. he's quite familiar with the food, and and there you did create a lot of like cultural days with the yeah. with the food and with whatever proteins we were using that week and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. The um, flour the corn flour that he yeah. used at some point is in my kitchen at all times now like i just cook with it yeah. all the time and i wouldn't have known that no and and that's the thing we we always love to talk about these little uh, aha moments that people get it's not always about what the dish that you're going to be making a lot of times it's about a technique that you might have thought that you've known how to do for the last 20 years and and all of a sudden you realize that I haven't really, really been doing it as, as well as I could have. Or an ingredient that you just never knew existed. And so, you know, we always, we always love those. We, when you see the, the look on somebody's face when they get that little twinkle in their eye, that's, that's what we love. Well, I equate it to my tennis swing, which <laughs> over time starts twisting and going in slight error and you start creating bad yeah. habits again. And so it's nice to come in and even things that I've been doing for years just to get a refresher and to get a reminder that I'm actually, my grip is wrong and I need to, yeah. I need to recorrect it a little bit and that never hurts. Like I still don't yeah. mind most classes are started with the knife skills because there's usually some way I cut myself in the last year that I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it's really interesting because we, as we've been putting together this, this online course, we, you know, we've been coming with little, little tips that, promoting it and one of the one was how to how to use your knife properly in four minutes and four seconds and we have a video that we've done that literally shows somebody how to do this and you know those are those aha moments that are that people are like oh my goodness I can't believe that I didn't know how to do this I'm you know I'm 30 40 50 years old and I and I never knew how to use a knife properly and somebody just taught me on a video how to do it in four minutes and they're uh, just lucky if they didn't have to learn it the hard way <laughs> real close up um, mm -hmm. You guys also did a little bit of a renovation last year over at Northwest. What, what did you guys update? So the big renovation we did is, so we're in a building that's probably was built in the mid to late 40s. Uh, and so it used to be a machine shop. And the front facade hadn't been changed in, since last year. So with our landlord, we, we decided, actually, was it last year? It was the year before. Um, we decided we were going to tear it all apart and put in a brand new front facade. And it's amazing the number of people that now come by and say, how long have you been here? And it's like, well, you know, since 2004, <laughs> but it's just so much brighter and it attracts people's attention a lot more. So, uh, it's amazing we, what a fresh coat yeah. of paint can do. Well, it's amazing, well, yeah. And, and then we redid the floors uh, as well because uh, 
Tony, the senior partner, he is addicted to floors. He loves, like, we, we always joke that when he retires, he's never actually going to retire. He's just going to come and mop the floors every day because uh, he just, he is just completely addicted to the floors. So we, we had to put in new floors. He wanted to do that as well. So hopefully he's not watching this because he'll get mad at me for saying <laughs> he's Ah, he'll be fine. Why ah, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. um, one thing I learned also is as a designer, now that I'm focusing more on kitchen design, I think back to the days at school a lot because you learn how to cook in this very efficient. Yes. The, what do you have, like uh, three, three and three. So you maybe have like yeah. a nine foot space by a yeah. six foot space and every single thing you could possibly need is in that small space. Yeah. And for people that cook a lot, even just at home, yeah. I don't want to take two steps to get something oh. when I should only be taking one. And yeah. the more you walk, the more prone you are to accidents or spills or whatever. And so I'm, I've taken a lot of that to heart also just in doing residential kitchen yeah. design because it's just so efficient and yeah. you had everything you needed just right there. Well, we talk about the triangle, right? So that, I mean, a lot of times people consider the triangle being including their their fridge in that we don't we we consider the triangle being your cutting board your stove top and your sink those are the three things for the triangle and then you just bring everything you need from your fridge right and it's, oh, if like, you don't have to move that's the that's the key right once you get everything from your fridge just being able to wash your hands quickly or go to your stove top or do whatever and that's what's going to make you way more efficient cook that and you know learning how to cut well i agree totally because i designing kitchens everybody's like so how's my triangle i'm like forget the triangle don't there is no triangle that you've heard about before because yeah, i triangle. spend mm, probably 80 percent of my time between my stove and my prep space yeah Yep. And I'll visit the sink once in a while and I'll visit the fridge yep. once in a while. But 80% of my time is really just that prep in that stove. Yep. And yep. so that's my, it's not even a triangle. It's just a line and it has to be yep. real close. And I actually like, like I try and have mine back to back and in my new kitchen, I will as well. Yeah. Um, in that I can just like go from my prep to my stove without even taking a step. All I have to do is turn. And I like that. Well, yeah. And one of the things that we love to talk to people about is actually having movable uh, cutting boards that are a good size. So you could literally pick up your entire cutting board and move it over to, if you needed to work beside your, your stove top, you could. Right? I, did. I got a really nice, big, huge, like really thick one I got on yeah. auction. So I've been nice. going to the kitchen equipment auctions for different yeah. little bits and pieces because I like the, I really like exploring the intersection of commercial and residential for design yeah. and yeah, I got this big, beautiful one, and it was probably twenty bucks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we just we we just had a whole bunch uh, made for us from a company, not a company. It's a, it's a gentleman who works out of uh, Ontario, and all end cut wood, and it's I mean beautiful. And so I ended up buying one as well because I had an okay cutting board, not a great one. So uh, and so all the students have a cutting board that they can work with beside their sink and then they can literally just pick it up and move it to the stove which is which is crucial nice. Uh, yeah nice well i feel like we could talk forever on uh, all things food and cooking we should probably chat again but i really yeah, want we should. You to tell people about our giveaway yes oh yes we're, we're gonna have a, a great giveaway we were we were we were digging through the archives of things that that you know we we wanted to to give away so we're going to be giving away a japanese petty knife and we're going to be giving away an apron. We're not giving away Warren's apron, but it is an apron. <laughs> but we will get it. We, we will get it with your name on it. So that's that, and, I don't and even our logo. And our logo. With my name on it yet. I know <laughs> you can't enter. You're excluded from this draw. Sure. <laughs> and one of our notebooks. It's a reusable notebook, so it's got an erasable ink with a little piece of software that you can actually take pictures and download it, and you can up, you could have uploaded that to Google Drive. Um, for and we'll also, takers. yeah, and we'll also give uh ten percent off to any of our enthusiast classes. So, uh, in to to somebody that wants to 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 take to uh, to take one of those classes, they will get that included in their prize pack as well. So we're going to put that up. Um, I guess right after we we right after we do this. Um, right after so, we do this, we are going to get yeah. up on both of our Instagrams. I think. Yes. I'll, I'll work with Lena beside you there on it. 
And yes. um, in the meantime, where can people find Northwest Culinary Academy? Okay, so you can find us on Instagram. If you've already found us here at NWCAV Chefs. On the website, you can go to www.nwcav.com. If you're driving around town, we're at 2725 Main Street in Vancouver. So. Main and 10th, 11th. Between, yeah, no, between 10th and 11th. I had to take the bus every day because it was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the one down. The great thing is, is that we're close to transit. The downside is, is that there's lots of metered parking. <laughs> very close and actually about to be very close to a new SkyTrain station. They're literally tearing down buildings two blocks away from us. So, yeah. which, so which means that we, yeah, we, we, uh, it's going to be very exciting. We're, we're looking forward. For our students, it'll be incredibly, uh, incredibly valuable. So. I like it. Well, thank you yeah. so much for joining me today. Is and, it been half um, an hour already? That's that's amazing. Pretty much is. I know. Doesn't it fly? <laughs> um, it actually does fly. So we yeah. should definitely chat again. Maybe we should chat again should. when you guys are launching all your uh, programs in the fall or something. Yeah. Or That would be amazing. I'd love to. If you ever want to sit and go through one of my favorite recipes from the classes, we could do that one day. <laughs> whatever we want. One of your favorite practices, not your recipe. One okay. of my favorite practices. Um, one that it has been in my photos that I have made ever since that first basics program. And I do, yeah. I, I make it all different kinds of ways, but it was yeah. the salmon riet. Yes. I have made that yeah. so many different ways, but just the learning the technique, like you said, the yeah. poaching of the salmon, the um, combining it with your reduced wine and everything yeah. else. And it was just like, I've used it so many times and now I can can it. So I've been canning it. Oh, there, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Usually it's really funny because that's one of, there's usually three dishes that people say. There's the riette, there's the chicken salt and boca that a lot of times people yes. say, oh, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. And then the other one is the uh, spaghetti agli olio. So it's, it, that people all, a lot of times say that they do that. So, yeah. I think the first time, the first thing I'm going to make when my kitchen's done is fresh pasta once again. I really miss making fresh pasta. So, yeah. yeah. I have some favorites. We could we could teach the interweb peeps how to make something. I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely, that would be that would be amazing. I'd love to come on again. It'd be fun. Okay, thank you. Let's get that uh, giveaway up and going. Absolutely, we'll do that. You take thank care. You. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.